What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at a wireless 3D mouse and decide if it's worth checking out. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you guys might remember from a couple years ago, 3D Connection sent me their wireless space mouse for me to try out. And we checked it out on the channel, talked about what it could do, other things like that, and about 3D mice in general, and I kind of gave my opinion. And so this year, they sent me a different mouse, which I was interested in because it's the larger version of the wireless 3D mouse. So this particular mouse has not only the uh, 3D mouse piece right here, but it's also got additional buttons and tools on here that make it more configurable. So I wanted to take a look at this and see if this changed my opinion on 3D mice at all. So basically what it has is it has this joystick in here and you move the joystick up down, forward, back, or you twist it. And when you do that, that's going to change the way you move around in a scene. So like for example, if we look at this, if I push it or pull it up, and hold on, I'm gonna click in the window right here, but if I pull it up and down, notice how this object is going to move up and down. So I'm pulling it this way. And then you've also got the ability to do things like zooming in. So zooming in, you actually push it forward. So you take it and you push it this way. And notice how it's moving in. So I'm moving it this way to do forward back. So you've got all these different axes in here um, that you can use in order to change the way that things move around in a 3D scene. And so then when you're done, you kind of couple them all together, right? So you've got the ability to move them left and right, in and out, up and down, all inside of a 3D space, all at once. And so it's actually got a demo mode in here that you can use in order to practice working with the 3D mouse, just like this. So notice how I can fly around and practice putting all these parts and pieces together. So that's kind of a review of the 3D mouse in general. Now let's talk about this one in particular. And so previously we talked about the Space Mouse Wireless, which um, is going to be this little guy right here. So this one's very portable, fits on your desk, it's very heavy, um, and basically you put it down and then you can use it to kind of like move around um, in 3D. So it's good to take with you other things like that. We talked about this a little bit. I couldn't really get into it, but I know a lot of people absolutely love them. I know um, Aaron Dietzen at SketchUp loves his 3D mouse, for example. I think there's some others um, from the SketchUp Summit that said that they like theirs as well. Personally, I wasn't like that into it, um, but I thought it was a cool tool. I just didn't really want to spend the time practicing and getting good enough at it to actually use it day to day. So now I'm checking out one that's a little bit more expensive and a little bit different. And I was kind of curious if this would change the way that I would use a 3D mouse at all. So this is the Space Mouse Pro Wireless. Um, like I said, 3D Connection did send me one of these. I'm not really endorsing it one way or the other because I think uh, 3D Mouse is kind of a personal thing that uh, some people really like, some people don't like so much. It is a little bit more expensive than the other one. So I think the other one was 169. This one's gonna be 329. So it's a more expensive tool for sure. Um, if it's something that makes your workflow better, it's probably a worthwhile investment, but if it's not, then obviously it's probably not something that you want to really get into. Um, I will link to it in the notes down below. That is an affiliate link, but like I said, you can purchase or not purchase. Um, I'm just kind of giving my opinions of 3D mice in general. And so this one in particular, what I like about it, what's interesting about it is it's got more buttons and controls that are very configurable, right? So if you look at this thing, the previous 3D mouse that we looked at had two buttons on the side. This one has all of these additional programmable buttons. And a few of these on the side are really great for if you are navigating in your 3D space and you get lost or something like that, they can take you back to a view, but you can also configure these other buttons to do different things. So let's kind of take a look at some of those configurations and um, some of the things that you can do just so you have an idea of what this is capable of. So one thing that's really cool, at least for me, and we're gonna use this uh, 3D warehouse model. It's the fictional Victoria era railway station right here. And so whenever you switch programs, notice how it lets you save your settings per program. So if I was to click back into the trainer right here, Notice how 
This tells me the advanced settings that I'm editing in the settings function are for the 3D connection trainer. But if I click back into SketchUp, notice how my settings are going to be for Trimble SketchUp, right? So you can save different settings for different programs right here. And so there's a bunch of different things that you can edit and adjust. And so again, notice that each one of these programs has its own set of advanced settings, right? So if I click back into SketchUp, right here, this is gonna allow me to adjust things like the forward, back, left, right, right here. And one thing I'm liking is the option to lock your horizon. So what lock your horizon does is it makes it so that your horizon stays left and right like this, and you can't accidentally like rotate out of it. So this is a lot like in SketchUp when you orbit, right, using your regular mouse, your horizon kind of stays level. But then if you hold, I think it's the control key, notice how you can get off of the horizon and your mouse can get really wonky really fast. So I actually like that lock horizon option inside of the settings right here because it keeps it from kind of like flying off and rotating away on me right here, but you can adjust all of those different things. You can also adjust your speeds. You can reverse the forward and back, right? So you can set if the forward, if the forward moves you back or forward like this, um, as well as reversing things like the left and right, the up and down, depending on what you're comfortable with. Once I do this lock horizon, this actually works a lot better for me. One thing I will say about this particular device as opposed to the smaller one is because it's bigger, it feels more solid and I feel more confident putting my hand on it with its weight and everything like that, which um, it's kind of funny actually, because then once I've done that and I've kind of felt okay with this, and then I use the smaller one, I'm better with the smaller one. So um, just from like stability standpoint, this is definitely more stable to me in moving it around. So the trade-off to me is that this is less portable. It's obviously very big. I don't know if you're going to be throwing something like this in your bag. It comes with a nice case um, that would protect it really well. So, um, I mean, it, you could throw it in your bag. It just takes up a bunch of space. But let's take a look at some of the buttons and what those can do. Okay, and so what you can do with this is in addition to adjusting the navigation settings, right? Notice how I'm able to fly around really well with that lock horizon mode. Um, and again, the navigation in here is very smooth. So from that standpoint, this is actually really good for navigation. That's kind of one of the biggest pluses of something like this. But if you're inside of the settings over here, here and you go into your buttons, you're able to set what those buttons on the 3D mouse do. So if we take a look at this, right, notice how there's the one, two, three, four. So the one, two, three, four is going to correspond to the one, two, three, four buttons on the top of your mouse. But then you've also got all these other buttons like the menu button, you've got the fit button, you've got the rotation lock or the rotation on and off button right here. So um, all of these different buttons can be mapped to do different things. Now, one of the things I like about this is the ones over here on the right side are actually locked to some really good functions, they're not locked, they're set to some really good functions. So one of the things that you might run into, for example, is when you're flying around, you might get lost in a wall or something like that. So if we were to click in here and I was to get us lost in a wall, which shouldn't be especially difficult right here, this button for fit is basically gonna do a zoom extents. So all you have to do is kind of move your hand down and click on fit right here in order to do that move extents. You've also got options in here for going to some preset views, so like a front view, a right view, a top view, um, and then rotating that view 45 degrees right here. So those are pretty useful presets. I'm not sure if I would necessarily even change those. I think they're pretty helpful. And so then over here, you've also got like your shift and your control and your alt. I would probably map those to something else, though I suppose the shift is probably helpful if you're using a mouse in the other hand. So if you wanted to click on part of an object and start selecting things, you could do a shift 
just to hold it down and notice how notice how as I hold that shift button down in here it's modifying what's happening with my mouse cursor so one of my big complaints about the small space mouse was you have to take your hand off of your keyboard put it onto the space mouse then you move your hand back to the keyboard this helps with some of that but I'm not necessarily convinced that I still wouldn't be moving my hand back to my keyboard a bunch especially when I'm modeling because I'm always typing in dimensions and activating different tools and things like that. Now, what is cool is some of these buttons on here um, pop out little menus. So like one and two right now are set to pop out these little radial menus that allow you to access different tools. So if I was to press that inside of SketchUp, so we'll press the one button right here. So when I press it, notice what it does is it gives me this little radial menu with different tools on it. And so I can use that radial menu in order to access and activate different tools. So the goal here is to allow you to access these tools without having to take your hand off of the 3D mouse, right? And there's two different menus programmed to it right now. So I've got the one that's got like my tape measure and my offset tool and follow me. I've got the other one that's got things like the rotate tool and the scale tool. And again, the goal is you have your mouse in one hand, you have your 3D mouse in the other, and you're able to kind of keep your hand off of the keyboard. Now, that's interesting to me, but a lot of the time I'm still gonna have to move my mouse off of the 3D mouse and go back to the keyboard in order to type in lengths. So I think that's definitely a cool feature and I think it could reduce the number of times you're moving your hand off of the 3D mouse and onto your keyboard, but I don't think it's gonna get rid of it entirely. But another cool thing about that is you can configure your own menus in here, right? So for example, notice how button three is currently set to undo and redo, which um, absolutely makes sense. But if you wanted to, you could add a radial menu for views. So when you do that, right now, if I press three, it's going to give me these different views and I can click on them. So I can add different tools and different menus from within the settings. And so in addition, you can also click in here. And if you go into either the Trimble SketchUp, you can see the Trimble SketchUp tools show up under Trimble SketchUp. But if you go into radial menus, um, you can actually scroll down and create your own custom radial menu. And you can set it to either have four or eight sections. And we could just call this common SketchUp tools, but you could create this menu with um, different tools from SketchUp, right? So, and I'm just gonna add a bunch of tools in here just for speed's sake. So we'll put the axes in here, we'll do dimension, whatever you want it to be, really. Flip tool, we'll go with this for right now. So now, common SketchUp tools, if I press the four button, it's going to pop up a window that shows those tools that I set to that menu. So the custom menus are actually really cool and really nice. And so I could see you setting this up with a bunch of your commonly used tools and really kind of avoiding or reducing the number of times your hand moves off of that mouse onto your keyboard. So from that standpoint, pretty cool. Um, another thing I like about this is it's gonna work in any 3D modeling or rendering program, or not any, but most. So like for example, say that I needed to jump over into twin motion. And so if you fly over into twin motion, you can see how you're gonna be able to do a lot of the same thing, right? You can adjust the way that your mouse moves like this. You know, you've got your left, right, your zoom like this. And so I don't know what it is, but I find the navigation inside of twin motion to be, and obviously not like this when I'm holding it up, but I found the navigation in twin motion to be a little bit easier than the navigation in SketchUp. I'm not really sure what that is. It's probably a lack of practice on my part, but I did watch a video online. And one of the things that, uh, that the guy said that makes a ton of sense is the cool thing about this is if you work across multiple multiple different programs, you could set it up where it navigates the same way across all of them. And then you've got kind of like this universal navigation that you can do inside of your 3D space for any 3D modeling program that actually has like space mouse support. And a lot of them do, like I've used this in Rhino. I think it's working in Blender as well. I haven't tested it in Blender, um, but there is a lot of interoperability there as well. 
And so in this case, if you look at the buttons, right, the one, the one, two, three, four buttons are set in here to adjust your walk speed. So um, there's also other twin motion options as well. So you could set this to do different things um, having to do, you could set it to toggle your path tracer if you wanted to, um, as well as doing other things. So you could set this up with additional tools in here, but a lot of those other functions, like for example, the top view, the front view, other things like that are going to work with this tool as well. All right, so a couple final thoughts. So overall on this, I'm a little bit mixed. It doesn't really have anything to do with the product as much as my workflow. So um, I actually do really like the product. Um, so I like how stable it is. Um, I find this one, it just feels a little bit more stable than this one, just probably because I have more space to put my hand and rest it, but you've got kind of a portability trade-off. I have the same issue with this that I've always had with 3D mice, which is you're constantly moving your hand off of the keyboard onto the actual 3D mouse itself to work in the 3D. Um, but for like navigation and things like that, it's significantly smoother. So again, a little bit of a trade-off. I could see myself building this into my workflow, but I just don't know if I'm ever gonna get away from the wanting to have my hand on the keyboard because I'm entering data and things like that. So anyway, that's my opinion. Um, and again, you also do have the two options, right? You have the larger one, right here, which is going to cost more money. You've got the smaller one, which is more portable. Um, again, I don't have any issues with the quality of the tools. I think that they're great. And for people that navigate using 3D mice, um, you're absolutely gonna love it. Um, for the people that don't, maybe it's not a good fit, but uh, either way, that's kind of my opinion on the whole thing. So I will leave a link to that in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link, no pressure on purchasing or anything like that. Like I said, it is for some people and not for others, but leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about 3D mice and about these tools. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.